Hello, welcome to our channel. My name is Mfonobom Udosen, your host. You know, last week we discussed ordained to do good works. Ordained to do good works. So our memory verse clearly stated that for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That is Ephesians 2 verse 10. Ephesians 2 verse 10. So we are his workmanship created to do good works and these good works can only start when you give your life to christ so now let's look at the significance of uh, the price now the significance evil handwriting contrary to the elected were blotted away so when you become uh, a good workman through your own goodness evil handwriting is taken away bondage of sickness and infirmities are broken also lost opportunities and virtues are restored when you become a good workman now exchange was done to favor the lost jesus died on the cross that he may reconcile us back to god so evil provision were nailed to the cross with jesus it enlisted believers into spiritual blessings so delivering from the power of darkness and divine shifting into god's kingdom now we look at you are ordained to do good works. So what are the good works believers are called to do? What are the good works that believers are called to do? Bringing sinners to the cross for redemption. That's number one good work that we are to do. We have to evangelize. We have to bring people to Christ. Relieving people from pains. Relieving people from pains. You know, it's, just, uh, it's not enough for you to pray for a person. It's enough for you to be involved. You just pray for so maybe somebody is going through challenges, maybe sickness. You pray, say, Oh, God will heal you. Yes. How about if that sickness has drained that person's account or if uh, financials? Then you have to, after the prayers, you have to give the person maybe small money at least to sustain for the period. So, relieving people from pain is for you to do as the good works that Christ has called you to do. Intercession for those in captivity. Intercession now is in place of prayer. You know, some people run away from prayers. There's no way you can pray for others when you don't pray for yourself because it starts from you. It's just like what they call about, they talked about charity rather. They say charity starts from home. So prayer is just like a charity. You must pray for yourself first before you start praying for others. So intercessing for others is one of the things that we have to do and it is called good work. Supporting the helpless to receive assistance. Helping people is one of the good works. Fellowshipping with the saints. Encouraging others to be in church, be in church activities, doing things that pleases God, serving God is one of the good works that Christ has redeemed us, has called us to do. Contributing to the advancements of the gospel. Contributing to the advancement of the gospel, feeding the poor, clothing the homeless, praying for the troubled communities and nation counseling the afflicted and the rejected, being a family to the rejected, the afflicted, showing them love is one of the things that we are called to do and it is called good works. Hello, welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode, you'll be notified. Thank you. God bless you. So, today we want to discuss on judging others. Judging others. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me the grace to remain focused. Give me the grace to give others what I want. To show others what I deserve. To judge people because I know I'll be judged. And when I know I'm going to be judged, give me the grace to refrain from judging people that I may not be judged. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because I know this is done. For this is as in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So today we want to discuss on judging others. And our memory verse is taken from Matthew 7 verse 1. Matthew 7 verse 1. It says, Judge not that ye not be judged. 
judge not that ye not be judged. And our Bible text is taken from Luke 6 verse 37. Please, let's add 38 to it because 38 is now giving um, support to the verse 38. Let's read it together. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. 38 says, give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with measure you use it to be measured to you. You know, there's something about judging others. When you judge, you use your own mode. Maybe you use a derica. Believe me, when it's time for you to be judged, that your own derica will be pressed down. Whether it is for good, though, it will be pressed down. Whether it's for bad, though, it will be pressed down. So that's the reason I wanted us to add that 38 to it. That it's not just enough for you not to judge others. Don't judge others because you don't want to be judged. If you want to judge, know that the measure you'll be given, the same will be given to you. Even your own will be added. So if you are doing good, you do good. When the stuff, the returning part of that goodness comes, it will be added. But when it's the bad thing, something too will be added. So you have to understand that, that judging is not just a 50-50 ratio uh, judgment, no. When it, the return comes, certainly the ratio of return will be bigger than the ratio of descending. So now we have to understand that when you refuse to judge, when you refuse to judge, you won't be judged. When you do, do not condemn anybody. You will not be condemned. If you forgive, you will be forgiven. So we all should know that judging others negates divine order. And equally, we should know that believers have been instructed not to judge others, knowing fully well that there are dangers in judging others. There are gen dangers in judging others. Let's um, move into our lesson introduction. Introduction. Judge others means to form a decision or conclusion about someone. And the Bible warns us that we should not judge so that we will not be judged. That is in that memory, memory verse, Matthew 7 verse 1. So we will not, we will face judgment, not at one time of the other, this understanding. If we judge others, of course, certain that we are going to be judged at one time or the other, at one point too. So he is the one whom we must, God is the one that we must give account to, not human. So when we judge, we put ourselves in the place of God. So now, our first lesson outline says, judge not. What does judging others mean? Let's just look at it. It means evaluating, assessing, or forming critical opinion of someone or something. So if you have trouble seeing others' flaws, general thinking of people are being are all bad. When you don't like people, you are not like you feel, your feeling everyone is against you, or think the less of others and exalting yourself, you are trying to judge. If you don't like others, everything that a person is doing is bad. At least there is nobody that is perfect. Even you. At one point in time, you, know, you make mistakes. So nobody is perfect. So people are full of flaws. So we learn from our mistakes. But when you don't learn from your mistakes, that is only bad thing about it. So others are permitted to make mistakes. And you guide them to learn from their mistakes. But when you start condemning them in their own mistakes, it becomes a problem. Imagine if God should do that to us. So judging others. People judge others. People judge others. So avoid reckoning with potential inferiority, complex, and shame. You know, there are people, um, they will condemn others. But when they make that mistake on their own, they will start finding excuses. Hey, but you did the same thing, oh. Another person will be saying, you start to say, hey, you know, the reason I did this, and mm -mm. you should not give any reasons. Now, how did you give that person opportunity to defend his or herself? Did you give that person opportunity to tell you his or her reasons of doing it? But for you, when you do it, you have thousand and one reasons why you do it. No. Remember, when it's time, God will judge us for all that we have done. What you measure for others, we look at that verse 38 of that our Bible text. It will be measured to us, full measure, praise down. So the warning that comes with this teaching is, we will be judged when the, the way we judge others. If we want to judge mercilessly, of course, we should expect, expect that we too be judged mercilessly. If you want to judge, if you judge with mercy, certainly you know that mercy will be added unto you when or on your own day of judgment. 
denying others mercy will keep God away from showing you mercy. Denying others mercy will keep God from showing you mercy. Look at Matthew 7, 3 to 5. Matthew 7, 3 to 5. say, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eyes? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eyes when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrites, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. You know some people say, do as I say, not as I do. Hegemony, they won't control. Some people are drunk with their bureaucracy. I am the senior. Uh, mm -mm. Because you are senior in the place of work or in the establishment, whatever, does not mean you have knowledge. You have sense more than others. You start condemning people because of your inferiority. You know, this person, if I give him opportunity, will come take over, or if I take opportunity, will take the glory. No. When you start trying to force others to do what they should do because of your own bad judgment, of course, expect that a day will come that you'll be given the same treatment. So you should fear God while judging others. We should be satisfied with working on our life without judging others. We should be satisfied with working on our own life without uh, judging others. If you look at John 8, verse 2 to 11, John 8, verse 2 to 11, let's have a read. He said, At dawn, he appeared again in the temple court, where all the people gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus went down, bent down, and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older one first, until only Jesus was left. When the woman still sits standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has, none, has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and live your life of sin. That is, you have to go now and abandon your life of sin. Condemnation in this regard, Jesus was trying to demonstrate, is not that we should allow us to continue in doing bad things. But it will allow us to know between good and bad and allow our conscience. Because the Bible even said that if our conscience is enough to judge us, how about God? So that thing you are doing, you don't wait for somebody to come and tell you that you are doing bad. You know, that the Jew just made mention of a guy who was one of the security uh, personnel at camp. He later resigned and bought Marowa, a.k.a. Marowa, a tricycle, and started driving at the camp day. But they never knew that he had ulterior, ulterior motive. His conscience did not break him. A man, he said he started stealing things at the camp and using the keke to be taking the thing out. You know, when he gets to the gate, the people knowing him as a normal security person before, they would salute and greet themselves. And never knew that he was carrying things, stolen things out of the camp. But one day, God exposed him. He was caught. So, if before he started, his conscience, he allowed you to tell him, now man, you are a child of God. Don't do this. You don't want to be caught to be called a thief. No, you know that what you are doing is bad. Then warn yourself. Because if you continue, there's a stricter punishment. Let's look at the consist consequences of judging others. It fosters a negative and toxic environment and leads to conflict. When you start judging others, it brings problem into the environment. It can bring criticism in Christian fold. It can erode trust, respect, empathy, which are essential for healthy relationship. It is hurtful, causes relationship damage and destruction of good reputation. You look at Proverbs 22 verse 1. Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So, Whenever you judge others, you are putting yourself on God's role. That is assuming God's place. 
Let's look at Romans 14, verse 10 to 12. It says, You then, why do you judge your brothers or sisters? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, and every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of you of us will give an account of ourselves unto God. It is inaccurate. It can cause spiritual shipwreck. You know, it brings this information that can make mining ministry to be incapacitated and unproductive judging others especially jumping into conclusion when you did not hear all the full story you jump into conclusion it can cause problem in the church can cause problem at home can cause problem in the place of work can cause problem between husband and wife can cause problem between parents and children cause problem it, it can cause problem so judging others is something that has been causing problem since and is still causing problem today it is good that we turn a new leaf and allow things to slide. Sometimes allow God to lead us. So now, since we know that judging others negates divine order, we should desist from it. So it is saying then safe to conclude that the bottom line is that we are not to judge people. We are called to love them, even our enemies, to forgive them, to help them, to love them into the kingdom of God. If you start judging them, maybe those who are smoking, you condemn them for because they smoke. Or the drunkards, you condemn them because they are drunks. You those who are doing adultery and fornication, you condemn them. How then will they you be able to talk to them? How then will you be able to convert them? So please show them love. Go closer to them. The suffering of the cross speak through you to them that they may be reconciled back to God. Thank you for always coming around to study with us. I appreciate your time with us. God bless you for always coming here to study with us. I celebrate you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you indeed. Thank you. Please do share this with others. See you in the next episode. You're not a man. No. You're not a man. No. You're the God who opens doors. No man can shut.